Yeah. And so with that being said, who do you think is a likely... I mean, that's the big question, yeah. right? Like names. And this is really funny because there are the names that you get like Pochettino, Tan Hag and stuff like that. Zinedine Zidane. Zinedine Zidane. Who doesn't even speak English. Who doesn't speak is, English. There is zero possibility that Zinedine Zidane is going to take over at Manchester United. But when you talk about a manager that has to come in that has to have a stature, right? Because now you have a changing room with possibly the biggest ego in football. But some of those other players are superstars in their mm. own right and have egos as well. To be able to come in and take control of a dressing room of that nature, you have to be a big manager by, mm-hmm. you know, in the same light. And so names like, does Poch carry that weight? Because even though he plays attractive football, right? Hasn't won trophies. I, I don't know if he does play that attractive football. He, I mean, that's the that's what he's... Subjective, I yeah. suppose. But can, can someone like Ten Hag come in with the work that he's done at Ajax, the success that he's had in, in kind of building a team from scratch? And, you know, and Ajax are a selling club, right? Mm-hmm. So having to have turnover each year with players. And even before we like settle on oh, this is going to be the manager full time the interim manager who's going to come in see the job out that's also up in the air and I've heard names from pundits including Steve Bruce as someone <laughs> that could come in which former United legend of course and scored and double figures from centre back in a Premier League campaign and, and look like they've been throwing around a lot of former United players Rooney got asked about it in his post-match conference for come Derby on. come on now <laughs> It's getting silly. Yeah. It's getting silly and it, it just shows a lack of planning as well. To go in for the international break, knowing that Antonio Conte is available, someone with a winning pedigree, you've chosen to stick with your guy. And two weeks, you've gone, you know what, plans have changed, but there's no succession plan. Usually when a, when a manager gets fired, the entire staff go with him, right? Everyone has stayed apart from Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. So what does that suggest you know, is is that it was just not a well thought out decision. Who's the most likely to come in as interim manager in your mind? Because I am still You're stumped. I, I don't know who 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 is there. Speaking of succession plan, instead of the Amazon Doco, I want the United Doco, but it's HBO Succession. <laughs> <laughs> no plan. There is no plan. There's, There's no plan. obviously no joined up thinking. As you pointed out, oh, we're sticking with Ole. We're not going to pay Conte, uh, a mercenary coach, as as Gary Neville called him. Uh, well, you know, fat load of good that did. He would have been perfect because mm. he's a guy who doesn't suffer fools. He's going to impose his uh, his methodology and be incredibly disciplined about where he wants his players to be on the field in relation to the ball mm. in both attack and defense. They do these hours-long tactic sessions where he sets his team. It's 11 v 0. It's a called um, shadow play I think he calls mm. it and it's literally just ball goes over here you have to be here and he, sometimes he's walking out into the middle of the field and basically walking people across and saying no you, you're here yeah. and it's really specific it is really heavily scripted but players know what their jobs are shadow play sounds like a weird foreplay <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. I prefer not to speak yeah yeah um, <laughs> Uh, we talked about Pochettino. He's in a job at the moment, mm. pretty glamorous one. Yeah, uh, is it a placeholder before he goes for the United job? I don't know. Maybe he'll get sacked by sound, PSG. But it sounds weird to say that PSG is the placeholder job. But coaches don't enjoy it, though. It's funny. You look at Tuchel, for example. He's yeah. been given a new lease of life at Chelsea because yeah. these players actually listen to him. Mm. When he was in the dressing room with Mbappe and Neymar, this is just vibes FC, and he has to play a centre back and two. Uh, holding midfielders. Uh, as Maybe Oli should go to PSG. Vibe with vibe. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I think the players would have a fun time. Yeah, you know, no rules. Anything goes. Go out there. You Just know, live a little. Neymar can go fly to Brazil to go to his sister's birthday party. No problems. That's um, it. it. That could work, but uh, coaches don't seem to like PSG. I, I think um, Thomas Tuchel going to Chelsea and having a team that actually was receptive to his methods was a relief because he was having to. Uh, basically compromise on his philosophy because these three guys didn't defend. So he was basically blocking up the midfield with mm. three guys who kick shins and take names mm. instead of guys who can pass. And with Verratti injured, that team was hard to watch. Mm. Uh, so it was just individual brilliance that got them to the Champions League final. And they almost won it playing mm. some pretty ordinary stuff. Yeah. Uh, whereas at Chelsea, you can see his vision of football come to come mm. to fruition with 11 players who, who work for the team. Um, Maybe the United job represents a similar environment. I'm not sure, but 
I uh, think there's a famous there's no quote. Obvious, there's no obvious coach for the position, is my point. Yeah, and I think, like, Jürgen Klopp mentioned this, and if I'm misquoting, then I don't know. Could Sue me. Fuck. Don't, don't, no, don't sue I, us. I have no money. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's not worth it. Um, and he mentioned that, like, I think he interviewed for the job before, like, when he left Dortmund mm-hmm. before he signed for Liverpool, and he mentioned something about whether, I think it was him or his wife said that they were, like, a Mickey Mouse club. I, I, I think, like, a Disneyland Mickey Mouse club, just mm-hmm. the way they were being run. And I think this is and like another example of just a club run just with no plan. Yeah. You know, and the directors the, of football are bankers. But the branding is elite and the storytelling yeah. is elite, right? Disneyland looks amazing. Like it's so fun. Mickey Mouse and them and all just vibing and hanging out and you have soft drink and then you rock up and the lines are five hours <laughs> and you're like, the fuck am I doing here? And I feel that this is an example of that where Two weeks ago, Oli was in front of the press saying, look, I've spoken with the owners. We're cool. We're on the same page. We're going to see this through. And then two weeks later, you go, see you later. Spoken like a man scarred by his experience at Tokyo Disneyland. It was, yeah, look, don't, lines are not, it's just not <laughs> worth it. But the branding is on point. Yeah. <laughs> the image from the outside looks yeah. great until you start to look a little closer. Yeah. Um, there's no obvious candidate for the job. They should have gone for Conte. Um you know, Zidane's unemployed, but he's hanging out for the France job after Deschamps it doesn't help either gets sacked English. or, you know, after the 2022 World Cup, I think he's probably going to leave that position anyway. Yeah. So Zidane's going to coach France. And I don't even know if Zidane's a good coach. Obviously, he's got an incredible record, but it's very specific to yeah. Real Madrid, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, he Guess who doesn't... Guess who wants Zidane at United? <laughs> yes? Yeah. Yeah, okay. But, I mean, look, uh, he obviously found a way to maximize Ronaldo, um, I would say that's by making him peripheral to the build-up play. And <laughs> Benzema being basically the incorporative striker, mm. an elite midfield, elite midfield. Casemiro, Modric, Cruz is like, it's like the roof of the Sistine Chapel. Of yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, you know, they, they had a lot of advantages in their favor. United doesn't have a Casemiro. Mm. They sorely need one. Yeah. Um, so it's not the same setup, but I think he would try and maybe work with Cavani as the kind of hold-up player and maybe play mm. a two-striker system. That's that's what I would see him doing w- w- if he was to coach Ronaldo again. Yeah. But he doesn't speak English. He's hanging out for the France job. I can't see him walking Imagine into this Imagine him and Harry Maguire trying to work out what's going on on the pitch. <laughs> I mean, Zinedine Zidane in Manchester... Can you imagine it? That's not. Why would you? Why would you go there? He's no. a, he's already made it. He doesn't yeah. have to work. It's like doesn't need it. He doesn't need the headache. my pick just to bring an end to the United chat. Yeah, I think Ronaldo will play a manager. <laughs> I'm sure that's the next step for him. What if Ronaldo subs himself off, causes split amongst the fan base. What are you doing? 